My name is Walter Bokting and I'm a psychology professor and I co-direct the LGBT Health Initiative at Columbia University Medical Center. And this initiative is within the Division of Gender, Sexuality and Health and a collaboration between psychiatry and the Columbia School of Nursing. We published an article in the American Journal of Public Health that looked at the impact of stigma on uh, the mental health of transgender women and transgender men. And we found that such stigma as being uh, verbally harassed, having difficulties with, uh, and, and facing difficulties with employment, uh, having difficulty obtaining housing, having difficulty accessing health services, the stress that really emanates from those challenges does translate in higher levels of anxiety and depression found among this population. Minority stress really means that uh, minorities, because of the stigma attached to their different status, have added stress in addition to the stress that most people deal with from day to day. And it has been demonstrated that that stress is higher, for example, among LGBT populations. And among transgender people, we showed that uh, about 49% of trans women reported clinical levels of uh, depression and uh, about a third of transgender men reported clinical levels of depression. And for anxiety, we found that for both groups, that also was about a third. So those levels are much higher than what we find in a general population, and we attribute that to the added stress that they experience as a result of the stigma. We found that not only does stigma and discrimination have a negative impact on people's mental health, but that certain assets that transgender people have actually protects them from that negative impact. And the assets that we identified are family support, peer support, which is support and a connection with other transgender people in the transgender community, and identity pride, which is a level of acceptance of their particular transgender identity and when need be, being able to communicate that uh, as they go about their daily lives. Peace support can take many different forms. It means how uh, connected are you to other people? Do you have friends that are transgender? Do you uh, frequent meetings at, say, a community center organized specifically for transgender people? So how alone or how connected are you in the community? And uh, if one is more connected to the community, it allows one to counteract the negative impact of stigma by comparing one situation to others like them and realizing that they are not that different, that they share a lot of common struggles and a common experience with other people. So when people from a minority can do that, their self-esteem then improves. They feel less different. They recognize that they have a lot in common with other people who have a similar experience. Identity pride uh, is related to how one feels about oneself and not only seeing being transgender as a challenge, but also as something special, uh, as a, giving an added value to one's life and identity. And in the past, transgender people uh, would oftentimes change gender roles and masculinize and feminize through hormones and surgery in an effort to really blend in with the majority population. And what we have found over time, even people who have go to that great length, that they, uh, that this is a different identity and that they continue to be part of a minority population. And that that has its challenges, but that also has its value. And so the more one can embrace that and work with that, the more comfortable, the better people's adjustment is in society. The paper has a number of implications both for research and care. For research, the next step clearly is a longitudinal study where we can follow transgender people over time and understand more how stigma really impacts their uh, stress level and then their uh, health so that we can more specifically intervene at challenging times and that we can find out what resources like the peer support uh, at what points in their development this can be most powerful or how we can uh, connect people more with others uh, like them. Then in the clinical realm, clinicians can actually facilitate that. 
they can connect transgender people to uh, resources, whether that's online or offline. They could organize support groups or even a monthly social gathering where transgender people can meet others.